Aji lau video ke jano wo 60 anniversary. Nagalin legislative assembly edu occasion de SC jamara pisi strong speech ekta dina se naka oborde. Do idu do naka manusom man hunuwa lagi huni ke na bujob lagi kunuru truth history ase idu do. Tai kuya se ki nakalen hobo nakalim no hobo kuya se kile mane nakalen laga blood bra nakalen do bai se ina kuya se do man hunuwa. The mother become very sick. Because of various circumstances. So delivery was not possible. Natural delivery was not possible. So it had to be taken out through cesarean. Because the question arose whether the people should be taken alive or let the baby and the mother should die. That was a decision. That was the situation faced by other people. And at that time, maybe good surgeon, they said, let us first try to take out the baby so that through cesarean, so that it can be alive. In other words, Nagaland was born, not naturally, but by Cesarean. And we thought that only the people would be alive, but mother also. She was unconscious. So when delivery was taken to Cesarean, the mother didn't know whether she has given birth to the baby or not. That is the reason why, even today, some people say, take our thinking, that they have not given birth to the child. Whereas the people have grown up, now 60 years. And yet there are people who are still waiting, waiting, the birth of the child. That is the difference which we should also know. Secondly, all the states in the country, these were reorganized to the recommendation of the state recommendation committee on language basis. But Nagaland is the only state in the country for the first time after independence, it was created through political negotiation at prime minister's level. Why? Because government of India has recognized the uniqueness of Naga political history. It was at that time, people were talking about big states. But at that point of time, when negotiation took place, it has to be agreed upon. And it was, Nagaland is the only first state which was created through political agreement. Mind you. And that is called a separate status. And not only that, in order to protect our religious practices, social practices, even land, our modern land, 371A is there. I was reading some uh, article, said by said, it was in the advice, on the advice of Varayal then no, we were in the drafting committee. We have taken it out from nine point agreement between NSC and Sir Akbar Hydri in 1947. And we converted into constitutional provisions. It was not an advice of anybody, but it was the drafting committee appointed by the Naga People's Convention. Now, 
fees have been on air, land and its resources. This was included, and to our great surprise and happiness, the government of India has recognized this provisions, 371A, and this is the only provisions for Nagaland only, and that is the peculiar status of Nagaland today. Now, have a name, Nagaland, which is very dear to our heart, because in our youth, during this political movement, the youth used to sing, God bless Nagaland. God bless Nagaland. Not Nagaland. God bless Nagaland. And this is designed, shaped, and keep imprint by Naka National Council. And this was formalized Christian on 1st December 1963. No other person than Dr. Radha the President of India. Since then, Nagaland has been officially, politically, constitutionally recognized as Nagaland. And Nagaland become very important political entity in the Indian constitution. And from that day, Nagaland has appeared at the map of the world. Nagaland has been recorded as a separate entity within the Indian Union in all the records of the world. But today, some people are even challenging the identity, the political entity of Nagaland. Honorable members, should we not be alert to this? Because in today's world, there are so many elements without understanding the sanctity of Nagaland. They want to challenge this one. But I'm telling you, Nagaland was purchased by the precious blood of the people of Nagaland. Remember, it was purchased through our blood. And therefore, we should not allow any people, any element, to disturb, to tarnish the sanctity of our dear Nagaland. Now, I would like to tell you why the People's Convention was formed. Why? Today, many a time, especially younger generation, without knowing the situation at that point of time, talking so much about against City Point, against the People's Convention. But there was a time in the 50s. Because of armed conflict between the Indian security forces and the terrorists of the Naga underground. Then what happened? Houses were burned, granaries were burned, remaining villages were grew and stockaded. The culture was denied. Open was also denied. Men folks were deadly engaged in labor force. And the rest were put in jail. Now my people at that time, no food, there was no cultivation. Everything makes no one to look after. Meeting friends, suspicion. Underground people. Now, 
pressure from Indian security forces, and they completely cut off from the people because of stockaded or villages. And when the villagers didn't have anything to eat, and when villagers could not go out of the village, naturally, our gather of the underground people, you are much more hit harder than the overground. At that point of time, Naga people suffer. They face troubles and difficulties. And our people live in that condition, unknown, unheard, unloved, uncared by our shared world. And we're really standing on a shadowy borderland. Where to go? Whether left or right or front or back. And at that point of time, the Naga political movement was on the verge of collapse. And after shedding so much of blood and tears 